This is now our third video looking at finding the area bounded by polar curves. In this question we're asked to find the area of a single loop of a curve with the equation r is equal to a cos 3 theta. First let's introduce this curve as we haven't looked at this one yet. What we're going to get with this one now is the following. We're going to have what we would say either three loops or three petals. And the general shape of this, and I'll, I'll draw a general shape, is going to look something, and this will really be a something like, it will have one petal here, and then we will have another petal here, and then we will have the final one in up here. And what we want to think about now is just one loop or one petal of this. We can put this point out here, r is equal to a cos 3 theta. So if we take theta to be equal to 0, cos of 0 is 1, this point's going to be a. Okay, so that distance is going to be a. We're interested in the area of a single loop. Remember, this is symmetric about the x-axis. What I would like to think about now is where this is going to be 0. And the way I like to think about this now is what value is going to make this 0. And if I sub in here pi by 6, so if I take uh, theta to be equal to pi by 6, 3 lots of pi uh, by 6 is going to give us pi by 2. The cosine of pi by 2 is naught. So therefore, if we think about it here, we're going to be integrating. This point is going to be pi by 6. And by symmetry, we're going to have minus pi by 6. You've got two choices right here. I'm only going to do the integral now from 0 to pi by 6, and then I'm going to double it up. So let's have a look at it. And you don't have to do it this way. It's a few different approaches. I'm going to get this area right here from the half line where theta is equal to 0 to the half line where theta is pi by 6 and then simply double my answer up. I can go from, and we'll see going from negative is equally valid. So what we're looking for then is now, and the general formula is 1 half the integral from now and we're going to take this from alpha to beta and what I'm going to say now is and I'll put these on here I'll start off with a general so let's go from alpha to beta and then we'll uh, make it specific as we go of r squared d theta this is the general um, formula that we use to find the area um, trapped between the polar curve what I'm going to do though instead I'm going to do in, I'm going to do two lots of the integral. So essentially, I'm just going to make this 1, and we're going to go from 0 to pi by 6. Okay? So you could do 1 half, and you could go from negative pi by 6 to pi by 6. I'm just saying I'm going to do two lots of this 1. So in your work, you might want to do two lots of. So now, let's square this. What we're going to get then is the integral, and we're going to have a squared cos squared 3 theta d theta. Don't lose sight of that. We need to be squaring this. That's one of the... Um, many students will simply go ahead and integrate that. So now what I'm looking for is bringing the constant the other side, a squared, the integral from 0 to pi by 6. And then what we're going to have is the integral of uh, cos squared 3 theta d theta. So I need to deal with this cos squared 3 theta. I know if I have cos 6 theta that's going to be equal to 2 cos squared 3 theta minus 1. So rewriting this by adding 1 to both sides and dividing by 2, I can say cos squared 3 theta is going to be equal to 1 half the quantity of cos 6 theta plus 1. So replacing this, and again bringing my constant, the other side of the integral sign, what I'm going to have is the following. I'm going to have a squared over 2. And now I'm interested in the integral from 0 to pi by 6 of cos 6 theta plus 1 d theta. So if we do that, what's that going to give me? The integral of cos 6 theta, we're going to end up now and we'll be evaluating. So we'll go a squared over 2, evaluating from 0 to pi by 6 by symmetry. I'm allowed to do this because it's symmetric. We're going to get 1 over 6 sine 6 theta and then we're going to get plus theta and that's where we wind up so let's evaluate now so we'll have a squared over 2 on the outside and then I'll take uh, pi by 6 to begin with well sine of uh, theta 6 theta when uh, theta is pi by 6 so it's going to give a sine of pi sine of pi is going to be uh, naught then we can have theta which is going to be plus pi by 6 and then of course 
this is where the advantage of using zero comes in. I'm going to get zero plus zero. So what does that leave me with now? It leaves me with a squared pi or pi a squared over 12. And again, it's units squared. And that is the area of one loop. And as you, if you want to take your time, and you can go from negative pi by 6 to pi by 6 and leave this half in. All I've done is found from the half line 0 to pi by 6 and doubled it up, as these are symmetric about the x-axis. If you want to hit pause and you want to go from, uh, your, uh, from um, negative pi by 6 to pi by 6 and keep that half there, you're welcome to do so. But that's where we should wind up. If that's sort of blown you away a little and you're not cool with that, please do check the previous two videos as they rely somewhat on this information here.